I want to thank the panelists for being here and maybe reset the stage just a bit. Uh, all of us stipulate uh, the, the great benefits of 340B. The pharmaceutical companies stipulate that. I mean, it's been around for a long time. I think what we're starting to look into, though, and I won't use the word abuse, because if something's legal, it's not an abuse, but I'll use the word loophole. Uh, we've seen a, a huge increase in the number of oncology practices, which deliver the most expensive drugs to America, being bought up by hospitals, whether it's John Hopkins or others. Uh, right in my area, the largest oncology practice was recent, recently purchased by a DISH hospital. And I would uh, say for only one reason, and that's the 340B profit. Uh, you know, they're buying up oncology practices where basically when you're out in the suburbs, the vast majority of those patients are fully insured. Uh, those practices have never gotten 340B discounts on the $100,000 kind of drugs. The minute a DISH hospital acquires that practice, all of a sudden these 25 to 50 percent discounts flow to the bottom line of the hospital, plain and simple. It's a business decision, can't blame you for it. Uh, it's legal. Uh, but I call that a loophole, and here's why. If I look at the requirements to be a DISH hospital, you have to have a certain percent of Medicare and Medicaid patients, inpatients, not outpatients. It's defined and calculated by inpatient stays in the hospital. But yet when you get to a, a uh, clinic in the suburbs, those are outpatient. So the, these DISH hospitals, which qualify based on inpatient hospital stays, are able to acquire outpatient oncology practices without that impacting that calculation. That is a loophole. Number two, the whole idea that, uh, you know, what you call a child site, uh, you know, is one of these oncology, you know, practices. Nothing changes. The patients go to the, to the many cases, uh, like a shopping center, they park there, they see their same doctors. Uh, except the doctors now report work for the hospital. Uh, and and the, the monies that uh, the discount paid by the pharmaceutical company now goes to the bottom line of the hospital. We have no idea what it's going for. You tell us you're using it for outpatient work. The, the Ryan White clinics, they tell us exactly where they go. The hospitals tell us that's too much administrative overhead to tell us, but trust us, we're providing more services. Maybe you are. And if you are, you should be held accountable for it. Because here's the bottom line. I know this isn't government money, and this is the problem. It's the discount that pharmaceutical companies are giving, and people go, woe are the big pharmaceutical companies. They make too much money, yada, yada, yada. But, but let's face it, that's where the new discoveries are coming from that's improving health care in the United States. And here's my worry. The business model used to be, let's call it a 25, 30 percent discount over a certain number of groups, including your hospitals, but you didn't own these oncology practices. And I would put forth, you're buying them for only one reason. That's the bottom line of, of the discounts. At some point, the prices for these pharmaceuticals are going to go up for everyone. The pharmaceutical company says, I used to have to discount, I don't know, half my drugs. Now I'm discounting 90 percent of my drugs. Guess what? The list price goes up. There is no free lunch. And that's my problem. It's not that we don't understand the, the importance of 340B. It's that the definition of a dish hospital doesn't even take into account the outpatient work in these clinics. The, these are people that were fully reimbursed. Uh, you know, the, the other thing I'm a little troubled by, and you, know, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but many cases, a $100,000 cancer pr uh, procedure might be discounted to $40,000. Is that reasonable for a fully insured patient? You see it, 100 grand, oops, discount down to 40. But when you write it off as charity care or bad debt, don't you put it in as 100,000 and not 40? Mr. Rowland? Well, what I was gonna say is that uh, a couple of comments. The state of Maryland is a little bit different in that regard and the state of Maryland's hospital rates are regulated uh, by the uh, entity called the Health Services Cost Review Commission. And the charges are actually governed to a level that's very close to the cost. And so there is no opportunity of that that you're describing there. I would also point out that the, as a comprehensive cancer center, our growth has not been because of the purchase of any practices. Johns Hopkins Hospital has purchased no oncology practices. We grow because there is sort of a limitless demand based on demographics for, for the treatments that we offer. And so our growth in oncology is a growth in our drug spend that outpaces our revenue growth. 
And that's why our operating margin has actually been declining in the past couple of years down to three points. Yeah, my, my time's expired. I was going to get into, though, with Johns Hopkins, uh, the last two years of your diversion of, of pricing through the contract pharmacies, but that'll have to wait for another hearing.